Hi guys, this is the new Vauxhall Insignia Grand Sport. It's the 1.6 diesel. Once again, it's not the most exciting sports car we are gonna be driving, but it's definitely a car that needs taking into consideration. It's, it's overall a great car. Maybe just not as sporty as the name says. The lines are great, it's quite aggressive. In this case, the wheels are a bit small, but it does make the ride way more comfortable than with any uh, 19 or 20 inch wheels like other Vauxhall wear. It's almost there, it almost looks great. I think this specific model is slightly too undercover to be a cool Grand Sport. It's got very nice side lines, it's, it flows, it's got its fin like all the Germans. The back is slightly fat, chunky, sticky outy, but it's not offensive offensive and it's got a sunroof which I love, but it's all extra bits you gotta pay for. This model that we're driving today is out for 27 k okay. There are a million videos out there that will show you how the car is in terms of technology, space. As always, I wanna go for a ride and show you how it really behaves on the road. The interiors are really great. There's comfort, luxury, it's keyless. You only go for your button here. You've got a fantastic digital monitor there in the middle, which you can change into sport, more of a classic or modern look. And I'm sure in the future there will be more, but let's take it for a drive. Electric handbrake, super light power steering, everything is very technological. But once you are driving it, it doesn't feel that computerized. It's very simple, it's very light, it's something you can get used to very quickly, and it definitely doesn't ever fight you back, except when you have the lane assist engaged, for that one literally fights you back. This car is fitting the 17 inches wheel, which makes it a very soft ride. I do like new cars having big wheels, and I like harsh rides but sometimes the feedback you get from the wheel surpasses the real need and it, it becomes just uncomfortable way too many vibrations easily gets too loud and most of all with the roads that we get today full of potholes and roadworks and stuff having some extra padding is useful this is the 1.6 136 ps how does it perform not bad not bad for a 1.6 it is a bit soft especially at the lower revs it's lacking a bit of torque but once you're above your 2000 revs and the turbo can fully kick in then it doesn't really disappoint it's capable of a very good pull consider the size of the car where it lacks is from a stationary position we're now at a junction on the main road cars are coming really quickly we have to jump out with a good sprint but at lower revs this car doesn't have it so you end up having to kind of play on the clutch quite a lot and then it kind of pulls itself. In terms of ride, let's go back to the grand sport kind of idea. It's definitely grand, sport a bit less. It's, a, it's very soft and it does like to bounce after the jump. It doesn't have that feeling that old BMW used to have, that if you were sitting on the back of a saloon on a road like this, you'd be sick. But where it really struggles is in the change of weight, left to right in the shifting of weight. If you're leaning heavily to one side and the G-force is pushing out and you suddenly change and turn the other way, that shift feels like the car is full of water, pushes you out the other way more than it should. I do love the little monitor in the middle. It comes up with all sorts of information. It's got speed limits. You can change with a little button. You can flick through speed limit that nav information radio or even the revs a bit like in a video game so really it's pretty pretty useful the driving position is not bad at all you get a lot of customization the seat goes up and down you got a bit that lifts in and out here just the pedals are a bit too close to the steering wheel and although you can pull the steering wheel back it's still kind of I wish I could have it here or have my feet further that way. Especially for long distances, for somebody that has to spend many hours in the car. It corners quite well. You don't need to correct much, but it does bounce a bit too much. And at every ripple, it feels like you're shifting a bit towards the outside. You lose a few centimeters of ground. 
you approach a corner like this at speed, you put it into second gear to get the weight back. Eh, eh, not too bad. The tires do fold underneath quite a lot. Even if you're kind of holding the traction back, even if you have the, your revs up and you don't let the car fall into the corner too much, it tends to go that way because it's not designed to keep it steady, to keep it down. The gearbox is soft, it's very soft. Everybody can jump in the car and just easily get used to it. But don't ask too much of it. I guess it's normal, that's what we expect from a car like this. It's a saloon, it's a comfortable saloon. You got the climate control down here, which is better than having it only in there, like many Peugeot do. The navigation system is quite intuitive. I don't like the graphics too much. And as soon as you zoom out, you lose all the side roads, which is a bit annoying. It's got 4G and transmit the Wi-Fi to the car, phone, and then all those things that all new cars do, but it's, they're quite easy. A lot of controls, heated steering wheel, heated seat, even at the back. It is really great. It's funny because the Impress in front of us doesn't really have the Grand Sport title on it. Maybe it doesn't need it. So don't think for a second that this is a bad car. The Insignia is really good. It does what it's designed to do, which is taking a lot of people with a lot of stuff somewhere. The 1.6 runs on thin air, which is amazing, way better than the 2 litres, but I would still go for the 2 litres. It's just so close to be fun, you know? I really enjoyed it. I'd keep it, really. I would use it to go to the place where there would be a fun car to drive, then I park the fun car and I'd go back home with this one. It doesn't look bad at all and I strongly recommend it to anybody that is looking for a comfortable car with the perks of the technology and the good looks. And yeah, this is kind of where it belongs, in a family area. It's a good car. Just a reminder, I don't do this for money, I don't do this for glory, I do this for fun. I enjoy driving and I enjoy telling you how cars feel on the road. So if you like the video, please click the button down there and subscribe because there will be a lot more to come. <laughs>